my ex-husband, cheated on me with my sister. It's been six years since, and I just received an email from him. I, 33F, met my ex-husband, Dan, 40IF, almost 15 years ago at a restaurant when I was celebrating my 18th birthday. He was really nice, charming, and mature. He made me feel loved and special. For some context, I grew up in a dysfunctional family. My mom and dad used to always fight. My dad would sometimes go out and not come back for months. He died when my sister Abby, 25F, was born. My mom was way too fond of Abby since her birth rather than me. Abby was basically babied by my mother. She didn't neglect me at all, always did her best as a mother and provided for me, but I always felt sometime missing. After Dan came to my life, I didn't feel like there was something missing from me. He supported me. He was caring. He would always buy me gifts and take me out in long drives. I felt complete when I was with him. We got married after dating for four years. I wanted to start a family right away, but Dan encouraged me to do my master's and helped me build my career. He wanted us to be in a stable position financially before we start thinking about having kids. Seriously, he was the best guy I could ever ask for. After five years of being happily married, I discovered that my husband was cheating on me with Abby. I discovered the affair when my husband made an excuse that he will go out of town for a week, but he stayed in town and he booked a hotel room where he and Abby can have sex. This has been going on for six months behind my back. I was really devastated. Abby and I were close growing up. I loved her and cared for her. How could she do this to me? After the D-Day, Dan and I had a fight. I asked how could he do this to me? That too with my sister who just turned 19? He said he didn't love me anymore, that I don't give him enough attention, that I am not the same girl he fell in love with. Between this mess, I discovered that I was pregnant. But due to the stress, I lost the baby. He didn't even care enough to visit me at the hospital when I lost our child. He was having a weekend getaway with my sister. I should have seen the signs. Abby would always be touchy with Dan. Dan would sometimes stare at her. But it is still very disturbing for me. My mother as usual took Abby's side and told me to just make peace with it. I wanted to kale myself because I had no one left. Lost my child and my husband, my whole family. Then my best friend Tina, my savior, came to my rescue. She was moving to another state and asked me to come with her. I said yes. I was already divorced at that point, and we lived in a small town. So I would obviously run into my ex and my sister. It took me a while to settle into my new life in a different state, but I met some kind people there. It helped me heal some trauma. I still have trust issues. I met my now husband, Tony, 32M, after one year of moving to the new place. I was really hesitant and kept my guard up, but he showed me that he is trustworthy and loves me a lot. I was so happy with him that I almost forgot about the life I had back in my hometown. His parents were really welcoming and generous people. We got married a year ago. I am now pregnant with our first child. Yesterday, I got an email from my ex, Dan. It just brought back all the bad memories. I am just paraphrasing his email. He mentioned that he misses me. He tried to find me but couldn't. He is very miserable with my sister. She is very dumb and doesn't care about him like I do. I used to bake him a cake and throw birthdays for him. But Abby only texted him happy birthday and didn't even bother to buy him a cake. Plus, she is very rude. She doesn't respect him. She is always at the bar with her friends. He also mentioned that she has cheated on him five times already. The last affair was with his cousin. Our mother also doesn't stop her. He will soon file for a divorce, but lately, he has been missing me a lot. He wants us to try again as a couple. He wants us to become a family just like before. Since I do not have social media except for Instagram, which is private, he probably doesn't know that I am married and I have a baby on the way. I don't know if I should feel pity for him or just laugh because the grass on his side is very brown rather than green. Update. I just wanted to say thanks to all of you who messaged and showed me support. I have decided to send him an email and be done with it. It goes like, Dan, I am sorry to hear that you are suffering, but there is no way I would be with you. Yes, there was a time when I used to be that girl who would have taken you in a heartbeat, but that girl is not there anymore. That girl has died the day I had a miscarriage and you were somewhere shacking up with my sister. I called you, but you never picked it up. I am married to a wonderful man who loves me and cherishes me. I am also pregnant with our first child. I am beginning this new chapter of my life with someone I love and care deeply. So please, do not contact me ever again. You made your choice. You chose my barely legal sister over me. I do not care if she cheats on you or she doesn't respect you. Someone like you don't deserve loyalty and respect anyways. I have left my old life in my old town.
it will be best for you to move on and have some self-reflect on yourself. You are just a deeply insecure man who is getting old and thought having a young woman would be good by your side. Goodbye. Update 2. 3 March. A lot of you have been asking me what he replied. Well, he replied within an hour of me emailing him. He said that he was stupid enough to believe that I would still wait for him. And he said he would always wait for me because no matter what, I will always be his baby doll. I cringed hard. He used to call me that, but now it feels repulsive. I also got an email from my mom and my sister. My mom just congratulated me and was excited that she is going to be a grandmother. And my sister also did the same and said she will be the cool aunt. I cannot believe these people. They forgot how they treated me when I needed them, and moreover, betrayed me. I cried for a long time because I have been reading your comments. And it seems like me and my sister was groomed by that man. I feel so stupid. I know I shouldn't be mad at my sister, but she was old enough to know it's bad to have an affair with a married man. That too, someone who is your sister's husband. I blocked all of them. I am five months pregnant already. I don't need more stress. God bless my husband. He comforted me when I cried. Later took me out for ice cream. I hope I can move past this. Update. I am cooled down now. I think I can make a more elaborate update. Thanks to everyone who has shown me support. I needed it. The email from him, my ex, just struck me like a train. I had flashbacks of everything he has done to me. I think you guys deserve a detailed update. After I sent him the reply mail, he emailed me within an hour with the thing I said in my update two part. A few hours later, I get two other email from my mom and sister. They sent me in my old email address that I hardly use now. I don't know how they knew about my pregnancy. I try to keep a low profile. I still haven't posted my baby bump pics on social media or made any announcements. I only have Instagram to follow my friends. But it just scared me. I broke down crying on the spot. Luckily, my husband Tony was around. He held me and put me on the couch. He knows everything about me. I never hid anything from him. I was a little bit scared that my mom and sister would find me. He reassured me that I am hundreds of miles away from them. I mean, we are on the opposite part of our country. He took me out for ice cream to comfort me. It took two ice cream cones to finally calm me down, Lowell. I told him about my concerns and that my mom and sister might demand to see my baby. It's a girl. He told he would talk to his uncle, who is a police officer, to be in lookout for them. Even if they come here and force themselves on you, he would fight for it. He is going to consult his lawyer friend about this matter and told me not to worry about my ex. He cannot harm me anymore. My husband even made a joke that he would move countries if he have to. Lastly, someone in my post commented that I should alert the daycare about my mom and sister in case they try to steal my baby. Well, we aren't planning to put her in daycare. Even though I am currently working, I decided I would quit my job and look after my baby and focus on healing from giving birth. I do have a good amount of saving in my personal bank, and this is my own decision. I will go back to work when our little princess is a little bit older. My in-laws are amazing. My M.I.L. and Fiel lives nearby. They are both good people and offer to help with my child. Also, don't worry. Apart from my in-laws, I have a good support system too. Tina and her wife Jenny basically adopted me LOL. They are really good people and always helped me. I don't know what will happen in future, but at least I am surrounded by some good people that I never had growing up. Now. I will take your leave and enjoy my husband pampering me. If something big happens, I will keep you guys updated. And my ex, sister, and mother are all blocked. There has been no updates since. Story 2. My husband's nephew put his hand on me while I was sleeping. If I tell anyone, this whole family will be ruined. My husband's nephew and godson is 17. My husband got a job offer overseas for a month. We live in a house, and because I felt uncomfortable living alone in the house, my sister-in-law, my husband's sister, suggested that I stayed with them in their guest room. I love my husband's family, a big loving family that took me in and welcomed me with open heart and arms, even with me coming from a broken home with no family to love me, especially his oldest sister, 47-ish. My husband and I are 41 and 32. I loved staying with my sister-in-law. Everything was going great, besides missing my husband who I spoke to a couple of times a day. I am a night owl, and when everyone went to bed yesterday, I stayed up in the living room to binge House of the Dragon. I must have fallen asleep in the couch. I woke up later to my nephew's hand under my shirt. I pushed him away, but he put his hand on my mouth and pushed me back in the couch. He hit my heart a couple of times and told me to stop moving. 
I grabbed a cola glass I had on the coffee table and hit him with it. My sister-in-law must have heard him grunting in pain and came downstairs. She started hitting him and pushing him out. She asked him to go to the guest house and she went after him, probably to see to his head injury because he was bleeding. She later came back and took me to the bathroom because I had peed myself and cut my hand with the glass. She later gave me sleeping pills and stayed with me in the room. I woke up today at noon. Everyone but my sister-in-law was away. All the warmth had gone. She told me she was so disappointed in me. She opened her home to me, and yet I used her son. I told her that she knew the truth. She saw everything. She said she saw nothing, and nobody will believe someone like me, and if I wanted it on my conscience to break this family. I wanted to leave, but she blocked my way, because what will the family say? I started crying and begged her to let me go, and I won't say anything. Now I'm home, and I don't know what to do. This will destroy my husband. He loves his family. They're his pride and prize in life. What if he resented me for breaking his family and ruining their reputation? And worse, what if he didn't believe me? He'll be home in three weeks. The black eye will probably be gone by then. Edit. I'm sorry I messed up his age. He's 15 and will be turning 16 in a couple of months. I did bad math. Edit 2. Thank you for the response. I'm sorry I can't answer every question. I want to say that I've talked to my husband now, the usual scheduled phone call before bedtime, for him, but I just broke down crying and told him everything. He FaceTimed me and saw my face. He told me to pack a bag and wait for his friend to come and pick me up because he never wants me to be home alone. I, my husband and I have been married for a little over a year and we have been living in this city, my husband's hometown, for a couple of months. I don't know many people here. Anyway, he told me to stay with his friend and his friend's family. They're good people. He is flying home tomorrow. Thank you and I'm sorry again for not having the opportunity to answer everybody. Update. Hi everyone. This is a throwaway account. I have written here before and I got a lot of support. I owe 100% to the online community that I took the correct measure and told my husband. If it was up to me and my own thoughts and my SIL, I would have just kept this quiet and tried to move on. I will, however, not answer any DMs because I don't want to read all the sick and abusive DMs like the ones I got from my first post. I will gladly answer your comments here, but I'm deleting this account as well after this update. I want to answer a few questions first. One question about my last update. Why my husband believed me without questions. Many speculated that my husband must have known something about his nephew, and that's why he wasn't so surprised. No. I asked him this and he said, apart from the bruises on my face, he just believes me. I have never given him reasons not to trust or believe me. Why my husband told me to live with his friend's family. Many questioned why I wasn't independent enough to live alone in my house. This is a new town to me. I come from a very big city with people everywhere. To move to a smaller town living alone in a big house was a big change for me. I didn't feel comfortable, so my husband suggested that I should live with his sister and bond with my new family. After what happened, however, I went back home. My husband was floored by his nephew's actions, and honestly he didn't know what to expect from him or his parents anymore. He was scared they would hurt me, so he didn't want me to be alone. He was adamant that I didn't tell his family where I was either. He was just terrified. Also, I'm sorry I messed up his age. He's born Novio 6, it makes him 16 soon. I did the math wrong and made him 17. My husband came home late the in the afternoon next day after my post. I have never been so happy seeing him like I did then. He called his sister and told her he was going over. When he came home, it looked like he had been crying. He asked me if I wanted to press charges and that he wanted me to do it, but only if I wanted. When he was at his sister's, she tried to put the blame on me, but he told her to cut the crap if she really cared about her son. He asked her why she's not more worried about him. The way he escalated to beating a sleeping family member, go this length to overpower them. He also asked her why she gave me sleeping pills, about that, I don't know why I took them, I just did. I've unfortunately always obeyed people who I thought had authority over me since childhood. She told him that I was panicking and she couldn't calm me down. Anyway, she denied that her son ever done anything like this and that she still thought I came on to him. My husband talked to his nephew as well, and he was saddened to see that he wasn't sorry or affected at all. He didn't apologize even. He said he way trying to wake me up because the couch wasn't comfortable, and I hit him. We have made a report. There's not much more I can do. I don't think it will lead to anything TBH. But I wanted it to be out there. My husband's brother called him to yell at him. They have already started with the smear campaign. My husband told them my side. I don't know who they will choose to believe. My husband has six siblings. 
We will have to see how this will unfold. His nephew is still a child, and my husband doesn't really want to hurt him. He thinks he needs help, but not the type his parents are offering. Enabling him. Also, he shared the sentiment that many of you have. This boy will do it again, and probably I wasn't his first. It pains him because he loves him very much. But he needs to tell people what he's capable of doing to protect their families. My husband has been quiet and distant these past couple of days. I didn't know what to do about it. I just felt immensely guilty. I didn't know if I dared to apologize to him and ask his forgiveness for ruining his relationship with his favorite sister and her family. When I finally had the courage to do it, he looked surprised at me. He cried and told me that he was the one who's sorry. He thought that he was finally giving me the big family that I dreamt of. I don't know anything about my family. And he hugged me. I cried in his arms. We don't know what will happen now. We have plans on moving back to the big city. I don't know what to do with my new job. I need to quit after a couple of months. I'm a preschool teacher, so it shouldn't be hard to find a new job or get my old job back. Thank you again. I don't think I will be making any more posts. I just want to heal and move on.